Good evening everyone, time for another member update. So we're going to be talking about some really strange stuff tonight. Uh, before we start, I wanted to thank everybody who's been a member. Uh, we just had our fourth anniversary of the member site and although it's a small site, uh, I really appreciate all your support. Uh, this was a model I decided to go with because we saw the trends in the control of the mainstream media, not just the control of revenues uh, for our blog, but also control of information. So let's jump right in here. Uh, this is just, um, I'm speechless. Some of this stuff is so bizarre. So if you look at my comment here about Jim Sinclair, uh, Jim Sinclair just recently posted a article about cryptocurrencies and his opinion that uh, well we'll read it here but if you scroll up you can see that this is the link from Flyboy posted this on the 29th uh, Jim Sinclair's latest now you can click on that and guess what you get a 404 page article not found so immediately the first thing I did was to go to the Wayback Machine to see if I could find a copy of the article and uh, not surprisingly this site is not uh, it's not archived there either this articles not archived there or the sites not archived there I didn't get a robots.txt which is what you get with some of the others that want to cover their tracks but fortunately, I did get a copy in Google's cache. So uh, once I found this, I immediately saved it to my hard drive a copy of this web page. You can see it's posted July 28th, 1.46 p.m. And uh, this is the original Jim Sinclair post. Why Jim decided to take this down, I don't know. But as I mentioned in the comments, Jim has a very interesting connection to the banksters. And that's in the video that Jennifer uh, put. Uh, if you look at that uh, Chris Duane video, and I couldn't disagree with anyone more <laughs> about cryptocurrencies than Chris Duane, but he does a good job of exposing the Seligman house and um, where the Sinclair family came from. Interesting stuff don't know whether any of this is true but uh, let's read this this was posted on the site this was definitely on JS mindset and for whatever reason he he took it down be prepared the coming cashless society counting the steps to a cashless digital currency count this one Cryptocurrencies have been around for a while, and Bitcoin has been one of the most successful. Banking institutions have allowed them to remain so far. So there's a big assumption there. Let's talk about that real quick. Uh, talking about banking institutions allowing cryptocurrencies to remain is kind of, in my mind, like talking about Hollywood and the RIAA and the MPAA allowing BitTorrent to remain. Well, the fact of the matter is they've been fighting it ever since it began and they haven't been able to get rid of it and the banking institutions have been fighting cryptocurrencies from the very beginning they haven't been able to get rid of them uh, so they haven't allowed them to remain they have remained in spite of them only because it reinforces their agenda towards a cashless digital currency wow that's a big leap so immediately uh, Bitcoin and all other cryptocurrencies which are basically offshoots of Bitcoin the original idea uh, was created to further an agenda towards a cashless digital world currency that's a big assumption the more accepted digital cryptocurrencies are the easier it will be for governments and financial institutions to push their agenda of eliminating eliminating physical currency well um, again, that's silly. The bulk of transactions right now that you do, that I do, that the entire world does is not using physical currency. In fact, um, sometimes when I get the offer when I'm in the grocery store to get some cash back 
occasionally I'll take that because once in a rare while there will be a time where I have to use cash whether that's giving money to a homeless person or just uh, buying something at a store which is very rare to find a store uh, that only accepts cash so on those occasions where I click that button and get 20 bucks out and leave it in my wallet it sits in my wallet for two three four weeks or months because there's really everything I can do is by debit or credit card so we're already on this system I really don't know what he's talking about the current system is a cashless system uh, people are already accustomed to it uh, but Bitcoin is a system outside of the bankers control that's the key point that he skips over virtual currency has a future but it may not be what you think in order for central banks and sovereigns to easily employ digital currency it must be accepted ultimately central banks and sovereigns must have no digital competition in the meantime the cryptocurrencies have been left alone so that people will embrace the idea of being cashless okay so I think the idea he's trying to promote here is that the central banks are going to get people used to being uh, used to using digital currencies and uh, then once they're used to that they're going to introduce their own digital currency and they will slam the door shut and ban all other digital current uh, cryptocurrencies except for theirs well again I've already pointed out it's not a matter of whether they want to ban it it's a matter of whether they can ban it and uh, everything we've seen so far indicates they cannot so the question is uh, if banksters introduce their own cryptocurrencies which are centrally controlled which are as people say backed which have uh, which are basically fiat because they tell you you have to use this uh, the issue remains will people use it if it's something that governments can use to create money out of thin air which is the problem with fiat currencies right now and politicians using those fiat currencies to uh, come uh, to take their campaign promises and make good on them uh, why would people choose people who are libertarian minded people who are interested in preserving their wealth why would those people choose to use a centrally planned centrally backed cryptocurrencies when uh, cryptocurrency when there are uh, other competing cryptocurrencies out there like Bitcoin and the other 900 to a thousand knockoffs and I think the implication here is that they would all be banned but of course that's impossible continuing many people in all segments of the population are already virtually cashless payments are made online by debit credit cards bank transfers etc no physical money changes hands only digits on balance sheets are used as payment as more and more people subscribe to cashless transaction basis the easier it will be for a central bank or sovereign to employ it the other virtual currency so-called money will simply self-destruct mm, not sure why he says that many will turn out to be new Ponzi schemes or be regulated out of existence uh, well you're gonna have to pick one uh, I've already done a video on why cryptocurrencies based on Bitcoin decentralized cryptocurrencies are actually the furthest thing you could have from a Ponzi scheme um, you can find that on the Bitcoin office space YouTube channel that I did it's a Bitcoin channel on YouTube but I did one video on Ponzi schemes and uh, Bitcoin is not a Ponzi scheme so he's gonna have to choose or which is regulated out of existence and again that's a threat so both of those are empty uh, accus an empty accusation and an empty threat the cryptocurrencies presently in place are the beta tests for governments and central banks for the cashless future in which all money is virtual all reportable all controllable and all accessible to banks and sovereigns and best of all regulated by them well the thing is is I pointed out in my last video that things didn't stop with Bitcoin we have things like Zcash uh, Zek uh, we have Darkcoin uh, Dash we have a lot of cryptocurrencies now that have mixing built into them so and and there will be more in the future so the anonymity is going to be built into cryptocurrencies 
the horse is out of the barn, the genie's out of the bottle, the idea is out there, it's going to happen, that's the way it works with uh, computer technology. If, if someone can come up with an idea, someone can make it happen. Uh, so I don't know how this is going to happen, what he believes in. Federal Reserve full faith and guarantee treasury bills in low denominations with the ability to make change is the future. They will be known as Federal Full Faith Money F3M. Your wallet will be overseen by the banking system and the government when everything we perceive to be money is digital. This will apply this will not apply to gold which is outside of that system. In the USA, for example, the $100 bill has to be removed from circulation via a turn-in for exchange for smaller bill denominations. Can you imagine El Chapo's Posse showing up with a tractor trailers full of $100 bills for the exchange? He would also need three times as many tractor trailers to bring back his smaller bills. Well, you know, is Jim Sinclair so dumb to believe that the drug dealers are these independent uh criminals outside of the system uh, that's a ridiculous and absurd proposition uh, El Chapo is is just a, a an actor a fake person uh, that's a hoax but uh, even if it wasn't uh, obviously this person is already using the current banking system to launder money uh, you can watch the on Netflix you can watch uh, Ozark which is a series that's about money laundering and it goes into a lot of uh, processing of cash but uh, if you're seriously in need of money laundering and we're talking about a one trillion dollar drug trade that currently exists in the world as the UN has documented you're not going to be able to use uh, uh, bills you're not going to be able to use cryptocurrencies which only have a market cap right now of 87 billion dollars you're not going to be able to use any of that stuff you're going to have to use banks wall street banks and we know hsbc was implicated in money laundering so this is silly we all need to be mindful of what is actually taking place in our currencies and consider carefully if this is what we want if we don't want it, we need to not subscribe or worse, merely accept by our silence. India accepted the government's removal from circulation of larger denominations, the nation's physical currency money. This is a move towards digital cashless future. Be aware that as nations of people around the world, we deserve what we accept. Interesting. But again, he decided to take it down. Not sure why. Um, but let me take you to a much more interesting story here. Uh, like I said, this these are some strange things. This is a really strange story here. So if you remember, I covered that uh, BTCE story where uh, BTCE was shut down, and that's a big exchange. Uh, that was one of the top exchanges since the beginning. Uh, like I said, I used that exchange, got hacked on that exchange, some of my name coins were stolen. It was one of the first exchanges where you could actually do some altcoin trades. There weren't that many altcoins available. There was uh, Namecoin, PPCoin, NovaCoin, and a couple of others, Litecoin. Um, but that was really one of the only places you could trade those. And at the time, it was an exchange. In fact, at that time, all the exchanges, you could just send Bitcoin to it and didn't have to identify who you were because at that point in time Bitcoin wasn't considered money so there was no reason for any know your customer uh, anti-money laundering laws to apply because Bitcoin is just a thing um, but that has changed and they're beginning to blur those lines but let's look at the uh, Ethereum chart here because uh, I want to take you to a couple links about BTCE and their accounts so I have a, a link that I saved on my browser which was posted to one of the discussion boards talking about the BTCE uh, bust. And one of the messages that someone posted was that, well, we're, we're still holding our breath because we don't know um, what has happened to the assets because the... Uh, reported uh, location of the servers were apparently uh, 
uh, Mongolia, and uh, somewhere in Bulgaria, apparently. Although it was a Russian site, it's reported that the servers were in Bulgaria and Mongolia. And so even if they uh, arrested this CEO or the owner or whoever of the site in Greece, um, that doesn't mean that they have access to the funds. So one of the people posted a link to the Ethereum account and to the Bitcoin account. This is the Ethereum account. I'll click on this link again here. And you can see that this Ethereum address, the first thing I want you to notice is that you can see uh, latest of 25 transactions of 823,878 transactions. So the user who went onto the message board who said this is the real BTCE uh, Ethereum account. Uh, if it's not, you can see overview BTCE. If this is not their Ethereum account, then it's something that was planned for I don't know how many years. Uh, I guess I could download this CSV, but you can see here that there are almost a million transactions. So I think this is actually the real BTCE account. And when this was posted, the person was making the message, uh, making the point on the message board that don't worry, you may get your funds because no money has been transferred out of the Ethereum account. Now, the Ethereum account had roughly a hundred million dollars in it, or a, around five hundred thousand Ethereum at a price of two hundred dollars or so. Uh, I created a link on my browser for that Ethereum account. I also created a link on my browser for their Bitcoin wallet account. You can see the balance in the Bitcoin wallet is 411 Bitcoins. Now that's only about a million dollars. So that's not a really big amount compared to this Ethereum account. This Ethereum account was 485,000 Ethereum at $200, 200 something dollars, that's roughly $100 million. And at the time he made that post to the message board, it had not, nothing had happened. Now what is interesting here is I clicked on it today before I did this video, thinking that nothing had happened, but something had happened. Exactly one day and nine hours ago, someone transferred from BTCE to this address, 485,705.4, etc. Ethereum. Nearly $100 million was transferred out of that BTC account to somewhere. And uh, you can click on this this link to see what that address is. Uh, that address is not something that has been active that long. You can see the balance on this account is now 485,760 Ethereum, $95 million, and it has a total of 34 transactions. And you can see 16 hours ago. So this is crazy. Now, the first question that I asked when I saw this, uh, because I do a lot of uh, trading and transacting in cryptocurrencies, is who would immediately transfer $100 million in one transaction? Wouldn't you send 1000 first? When I'm pulling cryptocurrencies off of an exchange, I do a dollar, then 10, then 100, then 1000 then 10,000, then 100,000, whatever. I just keep going up by a factor of 10 because I want to make sure to begin with that the transaction is going to go through and be confirmed. And then once it is, then I increase my size incrementally until I'm convinced that it's a safe uh, bet, whether that's something to do with the exchange not being solvent, not being able to send me my crypto and locking that transaction away, or whether it's the coin itself, not being able to process the transaction, whatever the reason is, I will incrementally increase my transactions 
uh, until I can get my coins off of there. Now this is crazy. Someone in one transaction, one hour or one day and nine hours ago, sent one hundred million dollars of Ethereum from this BTC address that has eight hundred and twenty-three thousand transactions to another address. Who is that? And why would they do that? Would that not have to be somebody who has complete trust in the Ethereum blockchain? In fact, wouldn't it be somebody maybe who's even in control of the Ethereum blockchain? Now, you can look up these addresses. There's a lot of stories on these. They're almost all in Russian. This is one that's actually in English. So let's play this one. To the best of our knowledge, the BTCE website went offline Tuesday at 1.49 p.m. Moscow time, as shown on this farewell screen grab, also featuring some clear indications of data manipulation. $100 million worth of Ether was diverted from the BTCE account shortly after that. So there's a lot of comments in Russian. I don't have the translator out for all of the. There's other videos on this. Uh, you're going to have to do your own research. This is how much I've done, but I'm sure the story goes a lot farther. Right now, it's live. We have no information, but uh, my suspicion is I'll just tell you what I suspect is the case it is that James Sinclair, who happened to take his. Uh, article down uh, is right in a sense that uh, it's very clear to me that whoever made that Ethereum transaction is so confident in the ability of Ethereum to move that money around that uh, they have no qualms about doing one transaction for a hundred million dollars that tells me there's government fingerprints all over this. I see government fingerprints on BTCE from the beginning for, uh, to the shutdown to this transfer. This is really strange stuff and again it's a breaking story so I don't really know uh, what's going on here but uh, this is a really big story and hopefully you guys can flesh some more out on this for me and we'll talk to you next time.